Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gruppetto 2.0, officially the best podcast this side of the Pennines. Hey, sh- as ever, with me is Cameron Jeffers. Hey, Cam, I'm a little bit nervous today, mate. I'm not going to lie. Not because there's Why? plenty of women in the house, but because we've got a bona fide, genuine TV presenter on the show. Radio presenter, yeah, all-star yeah. legend, isn't he? He's going to know what we're doing more than, more than we know what we're doing. Mate, my camera is literally about to fall. Oh, Brilliant. my God. Brilliant. We can keep rolling. We can keep rolling. This is, this is content. Not, not the quality content that we want, especially when we've got someone of his calibre on. Fuck's sake, Cam. We're supposed to be professionals. Right, right. I, think we're, I think we're good. I think we're good. Right. Before we, right. Before we get on to the guest, because I want to I get into it as soon as possible, right? Two things. Firstly, uh, what do you think to Ben Foster calling you out on his YouTube channel um, over the weekend? Pretty big. What did he? Uh, he texted me. He said I'm called. He said it. He's, uh, he texted me about it, but I've not actually. And it's funny because a few of my mates that like aren't cyclists, like a few of just my like local kind of village mates that are just football fans, all watch his YouTube channel. Are all texting me like, "Hey Cam, like Ben's calling you out. Like, what are you gonna do about it?" I'm like, "I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, what do I do?" <laughs> it was in jest, but he basically called you out. It was for about the, a, for the Tron bike. It was about the yeah, yeah. He said he, he said he needed the Tron bike or something. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I told him. I told him. If he, I told him. I texted him and said, "If he gives me, if he gives me a shout out, then I'll, um, I'll, I'll do it for fifteen quid." Like that's when you know. That's when you know you've made it in in YouTube. When the biggest cycling YouTuber is calling you out. All right, steady on. Hey, you've only been around. If, uh, you did. You did this to bait me out, didn't you? I'll fuck <laughs> off. Hey, but come on. Hey, he's, nah, nearly look, a, he's nearly a half a million subs. Half a million, and he's got he set up an Instagram page just for his YouTube channel, which has nearly got like 100k. Mate, the guy is fucking fair play to him. The guy is killing it. The guy is killing it. Question though, how many subs would he have if he wasn't a professional footballer? Come on, be honest. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's helped him, but like, look, he's obviously, he's obviously like not anyone can be a professional footballer, right? You have to be pretty special to be a professional footballer, whether that's, you know, wow. your, your mentality, you your, your, worth, your work your work ethic, you know, whatever the case may be, you, you're certainly set apart from from kind of the rest of the, everyone else, right? The, mm-hmm. the was mere mortal. So I think whatever he wants, you know, if he wants to do anything in, in, in life, he's probably going to be successful at it just because he's got that, you know, that little thing inside him, that should, which I don't know the rest of us... Uh, probably aspiring to, no, to try and no, to try and no. find see see uh, when we get our guest on i'm gonna i'm gonna question him on this one i think everybody's got it inside him it's whether they find the passion that they're, they they want to follow and then they actually follow it through and don't let other people's opinion get to them that's my view all right and uh, and secondly how's the uh how's the beard coming along it's it's not bad, is it? It's it's getting a little bit too thick, like underneath, and then like not enough on the side. So I'm just at that awkward stage now. Like from a distance, it looks all right, but then when mm-hmm. you get up close, it's like all right, it's a bit blotchy here and here. And but hey, I said I'm not cutting it until the end of lockdown. So I think I've got about another month at least until uh, old Boris lets us free. So it's definitely aged, you, mate. I'm sorry to say, but you look good. You look good with it. Cheers. It's nice. Uh, is that? Double-ended compliment or what? I don't, where do I sit com- with that one? You what? What's a double-ended compliment? <laughs> no, is that not the right term? When like you give like, me a comp, you, sort of, you start with no, a negative a, and you finish on a positive. It's a back-ended compliment. That's back-ended. Double-ended. You're thinking back-ended. something else, aren't you? Shit, yeah. Sorry, it's <laughs> that time of the afternoon, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Anyway. Right, let's get our guest on because I'm so excited. There's so many things I want to ask him. Like, I don't even know where to start with how, it. Yeah, well, one sec, one sec. How, how long have we have you been trying oh to make this happen? Oh, my God. This guy is in demand, clearly in demand. Hey. Can, you, can you do it this day? Uh, no, I can't. I'm doing this. Can you do it this day? No. It must have been going on for a, at least two months. It was before Christmas, weren't it? We can get professional cyclists on this show easier than we can get this man. Right. But anyway, we've got him on. OJ Borg needs no introduction. The face of Zwift, the face of, well, the voice of Radio 2, the face of the National Lottery back in day, VH1, MTV. What hasn't he done apart from starting his own he- YouTube channel? Yeah, T4. I have actually got a YouTube channel, just no one goes on it. Um, I used to be the face of the balls, is how I used to like to think of myself when I was doing the National Lottery. Face of the balls. Uh, I was just, you know, I was just on. I was just on Ben Foster's um, YouTube channel. 415,000 subs. He's not hit the half million yet. Let's not get to that. Um, The thing (laughs) is, though, if he's calling you out, if he's calling you out, Cam, 
you don't text someone to tell you that you're calling them out, do you? That's not how it works. Surely you call them out and then you wait for somebody to fire back at you. If you're texting someone to call them out, that's like, what is it? It's like writing someone a letter before you attack in a road race. Oh, yeah. Good point. Mate, it's, welcome, welcome to the world of social media. It's not real. <laughs> what? Yeah. Uh, no, Ben Foster, though, is he, is he a cycling YouTuber or a footballing YouTuber? That's the interesting thing, because a lot of his stuff is all about the games that he plays and the stuff in the dressing room. The stuff he does in the yeah. bathroom. All the stuff he yeah. does in the I think I think uh, I think I think like his biggest videos are when he's got. I think his his signature move is is the GoPro in the goal, right? Um, GoPro in the goal, and I think or in, I or, think in the, or in the dressing room in the dressing, dressing room, room as well. Yeah. But yeah. what's good about that is it's bringing a football audience to cycling, and it's showing that the crossover is there. That all these sports don't need to exist on their own. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And I think what people enjoy about it is, I, I know I was speaking to him, him about this a, a while ago. I think people really enjoy like seeing the behind the scenes of a footballer. So we all see them on TV. We all see them running around the pitch for ninety minutes, chasing a bag of air. We all see them in he's the a post-match. goalkeeper. He doesn't run anyway. He's a goalkeeper, mate. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like football in, in general, uh, and we see them in the post the post game interviews. It's all very professional, um, but we don't sort of see anything more than that. And I think what what Ben's kind of bringing to the table is is having that insight into like these guys from more of a personal level and showing like what they're like as, as human beings as well as you know these these kind of top line professional sports athletes so um yeah man he's killing it i'm surprised that the team have let him do it and the the um the championship have let him stick a gopro in the goal because that, that surely there's a lot of um rights to that footage that people could charge mm. a lot of money for and they they seem to be giving it him and and yeah he's getting access everywhere isn't he have we lost OJ? Oh, he's, he's just enjoying his. He's just enjoying it. Just smiling at us. <laughs> he's just text saying, "Help me." He's, he's just text saying, "F this internet." Two seconds. Okay. So um. So anyway, what yeah. Should we talk about what do you th- what do you think to that? Like, imagine if you try like it, it's, look at hey, British it's, cycling I was and thinking, you with a GoPro. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day. It's literally the equivalent of of me putting a GoPro in a bike race, isn't it? It's literally the equivalent of of doing that. Like he's he's you know you have Eurosport, you've got I think is it BT Sport nowadays, which pay for BT Sport for, got for, it, Sky Sports have got it. Yeah, for the in EFL mm-hmm. and um, yeah. I'm so sorry. He's back. He's back. <laughs> so, so, do you know what? So I've got really good internet in this house. When I knew we were working from home, my wife works from home, every Zoom call she does is perfect. So I even bought a mesh network to make sure that when I was doing things, I could sit in the back bedroom where the kids aren't going to hassle me or, you know, you can't hear the hoover going off or the dog's not going to bark in my face. So I've even moved the Wi-Fi point closer to this and it still drops out. Useless. So, um, that, sorry. Where, where, Apologies. Where, where, whereabouts are you? Are you down in London? No, no, no. I live in Manchester. I live in Manchester? I never knew that. Yeah. No, no, no. I moved up here. So I went to university at Salford University years ago. No way. Uh, moved out of Leicester where I grew up, came to Salford. Spent like a few years here, lived here, tried to get into radio. First radio job I got was Coventry. So I moved out of Manchester down to live in Coventry. Then I moved back and then I moved to London. I was in London for a while, then Birmingham. And then when the radio station I was working for in Birmingham ended, Kerrang, they made me redundant. Basically, they sacked me like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, I moved back to Manchester because I was doing a day a week in London, if that, maybe a day every two weeks. I didn't see the point of living the London life for a day every two weeks. Oh, I love Manchester. Bloody love it. Where are you then? <sighs> Mate, I'm... <sighs> I... Where's Chris? <laughs> Fucking middle of, middle of God fuck nowhere. Exactly, middle <laughs> of nowhere. It, I'm the, I guess the closest town to me, the closest city is Derby. So... So are you in the Pennine? Like, yeah, Pennine yeah, yeah, Derbyshire. So where exactly are you? I'm not far from Mansfield. I don't like I don't like giving my location oh, away. Okay, just it's a case. very small town, and people go, "Oh yeah, no, yeah." And then they'll, uh, it's they'll very come small. And they'll come and they'll come and find me. But I'm in Derbyshire. That's all you need to know. Gotcha. I was just going to run a speed test quickly. Let me just run oh, a speed for test. For God's quickly. sake! Just checking. I'm just checking. It's all right. You're and fine. Go. You look good. Fine. You sound good. I've got t- I'm getting 20 megs. Jesus. Perfect. In Manchester. Cam's t- I've got 200. I've, mate, I've got 200 megs. I just checked it on my phone. My phone's getting 200. My laptop's getting 19. So that's where we're at. Cam's right stealing now. it all. That's why. Mother hey, I'm not. I'm not that close to I'm not that close. I'm a good 40 minutes away. We're probably using a different a different mast or whatever it is, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Where are you based, Cam? Uh, I am... Um, uh, do you know Chorley? I do know Chorley, yeah. Yeah, near, near Chorley. Chorley FM, coming in your ears. Yeah, coming Chorley, in your ears. If, you're, if, in your if, ears. if you live in Manchester, you'll know all about Chorley. 
You, my, my wife seriously did a radio show on Chorley FM. It was a, really? It was a, yeah, there was a local radio station for a while. My wife, who was a radio presenter before she moved into doing digital stuff, um, did a show on Chorley FM, which has always made me laugh. It's always made me laugh. Anyway, sorry, I'm sewing you down. Get back into it. No, 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 no. That, that, you know, it, I was going to say you know what this podcast like, but the chances are you've never listened to it, and it's literally. I don't just, listen to podcasts. I yeah, don't listen what, to pod. Yeah, it's 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 just a it's just a free range chat of of anything. But the the main reason I wanted to get you on is so I could pick your brains. What I didn't realize, mate, is you're actually a little bit older than me. For a start, yes. yeah, I um, I clearly had a harder paper round than you. Mate, you say this. You're on a HD link, and you look great right oh, now. Oh, thanks, mate. I don't want to. I'm not coming on to you, Chris, but I may. I say there's a lot more wrinkles appre- though when I get a closer up. I can appreciate a good-looking man, oh, and you're me. a good-looking man, hey. and so are you, Cam, as well. And that beard, yes, it's a little sporadic, <laughs> but may I say, you look rugged. I could see you in an advert for an outdoor brand right now, maybe sort of a uh, Fjall Raven or something like that. I could see you up to your knees in snow, trekking through the yeah. wilderness, some sort of some sort of coat with an ethically sourced down inside of it. I, I'd buy that coat if you had it. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't buy it online because I'm not shopping online at the moment. But if I was in a shop and your face was there, I'd buy that coat. Boom. Influenced. Mm. Thank you. That's, that's, that's pretty big. <laughs> So, so the main reason I wanted to get you on was to, to pick your brains as to, as I was saying, you were a little bit older, but I did think you were younger, but you've done so, oh, he's, he's gone, oh no, he's back. You've done so much in terms of presenting. How? I'm not, I'm here, I'm here. How, you know if, if it how, happens no, one more time, I'm going to move. Stop it. How did you get into presenting? Uh, always wanted to do it. Started off wanting to be an actor, mm-hmm. but I am unbelievably cynical, probably cynical in the wrong places for, the, for what I do for a living. I should be more cynical. But I'm, I'm cynical about a lot of a fame. I mean, which is good because I'm not famous, but I'm cynical about a lot of that sort of stuff and the game you need to play. Mm-hmm. Um, which, if you want to be an actor, my God, you can't be cynical. Not really. So I sort of knocked that on the hair. And I always loved the idea of radio presenting. And the way I got into this is long and tortuous and pretty organic. And people always go, oh, you chose your career to go this way. Oh, you did this. It's like, I didn't choose my career to go anyway. I said yes to whatever work I could get. And I was just funneled the mm-hmm. way a river meanders. And, you know, I've managed to end up on Radio 2, which is great. But along the way, as you said, I've worked for VH1, I've worked for MTV, I've worked for basically every radio station in the country at some point or another because I wanted to do it. You know, started off on hospital radio, did traffic and travel, and that was still a thing. Um, anything, anywhere that I could do, I did. So why radio? Why, why radio and not TV? I know you did TV. But- uh- Wow, TV work at the moment. I just haven't been offered a lot of it. And I'm in a full-time radio job, which means I can't travel to all the stuff I was doing before. Uh, the last big TV thing I did was was probably the lottery, actually. Yeah. Since then, I've done a lot of esports. Depends if you count esports as TV. I mean, it's on Twitch, and it's probably the biggest viewership I've ever had outside the lottery is all the, the Counter-Strike stuff it does that count. I did. It does count, yeah. Yeah, so, so for me... No real reason. I, I love the immediacy of radio. You come up with an idea during the show, you can do it. In TV, you can't really do that. You can't, you know, you need a production team, you need five camera people and whatever to make an idea happen. In radio, you need a producer and someone who's skilled and that's it. And you can come up with an idea. And I love playing records and I love being there. I love chatting. There is a beautiful skill to radio and the playing of music and the enthusiasm that goes with it. And you know you are talking to one person each time. Radio is a connection between one person to one person. It's not one person and a very large audience in the way that TV is. Mm. Radio, the first thing you ever get taught is you talk to one person. You don't say, hello, everybody. You say, hi, how are you? Which is why you end up with quite a lot of stalkers because people take it the wrong way sometimes. <laughs> but the, the, whole, the whole ethos of radio as a medium is you talk one-to-one. You know, if you're in your car driving somewhere, you want to feel like you're having a personal connection with the radio presenter. You don't want to feel one of 50,000, 100,000, a million people. Good point, yeah. Oh, so what's it like doing the uh, the show that you do? Because it's it's 12 till 3, isn't it, in the mm. evening? Mate, that must take its toll. Morning. morning. It does. Morning, yeah, morning. Uh, I mean, I, I am turning tiredness into an art form. <laughs> I'm turning tiredness into an art form. And I have aged horribly. And I cannot keep my weight down anymore. Like I train. I, I've, I've trained more over the past year than I ever have. And I cannot get I cannot get below 100 kilos. Absolutely can't, you know, because I snack too late at night and my body clock's all over the place. And I signed up for a whoop band just to prove how tired I was to my wife because she thinks more she's more tired than I am. So <laughs> I had to. I now have to pay a monthly subscription to whoop just to prove that I get less <laughs> <laughs> um which is worth mate less may i say 30 quid a month is worth it for the winning that argument every time it comes up 
which we because we fell out last night because I have, I've had a couple of days off because it's been half term and she was like well you can get up with the kids early and I'm like but I you know but I'm tired and then we had a whole thing yesterday she went and I know you're tired and you can tell and you're ratty and then our youngest woke up and she was like you can deal with it I was like, <laughs> we just had a whole conversation about this um so yeah it, it does take its toll but the good thing about doing that show is it feels like proper service broadcasting, public service broadcasting, because there is a whole lot of people who work in the night. They are, by definition, if you are a night worker, isolated, especially at the moment in COVID lockdown, super isolated. And I get so many messages. And it's the first time first time this ever happened to me of people going, you know what, you make the night shift go quicker when you're on the radio. And it makes what you do feel like it's worthwhile because playing, playing records and jokes and just being me sometimes can be very disposable and it is radio for for all its immediacy is very disposable you do it's gone you know Mm -hmm. podcasts tend to hang around for a while you know you can subscribe to six or seven episodes that have that are that are back you probably wouldn't do that with a live radio show because what i'm talking about happened at a certain time in a certain place and Mm -hmm. every day and every hour that goes past you sort of lose the point of it so it feels it it feels like i'm I'm giving a service to people, which I, I'm absolutely building up my part massively here. I know that. Yeah. I absolutely know I'm building my part up a bit, but that's what it's like doing it. And it's it's a good reason to go to work every night. I love that. I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Cam, would you be able to do that? You're because your streaming is getting later and later. But could you imagine streaming through the night? And, and well, I was gonna I was gonna ask him. Um, I was gonna ask you, OJ, what what's your schedule like? So when do you sleep? If you you know, you, like you said, you got kids, you got a wife. When do you sleep? Uh, I tend so I get off air at three. Um, yeah. I can be because I don't live far away from the studio. So if I'm straight out the door, I, I've been tending to cycle into work, so I can be home, and it's quicker for me to get back on the bike than it is to drive. By the time I've gone to the car park and driven out, I can be in bed before half three if I'm super knackered, so I don't drink any caffeine after midnight which sometimes means the last hour of my show, I make absolutely fucking no sense. You know, literally, it's like, did I speak? Was I here? Am I slow? Am I, do I sound like a drunk? Am I? Um, so I, I can be asleep by half three. It tends to be more like four o'clock or so, Whoop tells me. And I will then sleep until whatever time I get woken up. The problem is everyone's at home at the moment. So normally, yeah. you know, when kids go to school and everyone's out of the house, I would sleep till about 11 o'clock. Now it tends to be more like 10. And then when putting the kids to bed, I tend to just fall asleep like a narcoleptic wherever and try and get a cheeky another half hour before work. So sleep is, I don't get a lot of sleep, but you know, so let's, what are you going to do? Let's talk about training and let's move across to training and cycling because you are the face of Zwift. I was once upon a time for a, maybe a week, the face of Zwift before anybody had heard of Zwift, but now you are the the go-to man for Zwift, but I'm not going to hold it against him. You know, it's, f- it's fine, whatever. Call me the face of Zwift. I would call, I would call Matt Stevens the face of Zwift. Ooh. I'm merely, I'm merely a passing hairstyle that appears once a week. Uh, one of the faces. Well, yeah, I guess. Yeah, one of the faces. You're the, you're the lead presenter, and then Matt is obviously the. I guess you'd call him the, the presenting stroke pundit, really, wouldn't you? Because he comes from a cycling well, background. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Let's think of us as Mount Rushmore. I'm okay. one of the faces that's been carved into the cliff. All right. You got your face carved into the cliff, and I didn't. And I ain't even bitter about it. But what I want to know is, what what is it like doing it? Um, I love it. Well, you see, the thing was, though, I was well into Zwift before they asked me to do anything. Mm-hmm. And I've done a lot in my career. I've done I've done all sorts of stuff. I've, I've hosted darts, MMA, uh, cycling coverage. What else have I done? I've done bits Nuts of TV. sports. Nuts TV. Nuts oh, TV. Oh, mate, I love Nuts TV. It doesn't get brought up enough, the whole world of Nuts TV. We did, used to do a feature called uh, Blonde versus Brunette. And my personal <laughs> favourite was um, uh, Bathe Your Banger, which is where these guys came in with, like, these souped-up xr2s and stuff like that and if they got a question right a girl in a bikini i mean this isn't doing my brand any good right hear me talking about this but um a girl in a bikini would wash their like xr2 or their souped up metro with ridiculous rims on it Mate. Um, and if they got it wrong we'd pour horse shit through their sunroof so, um, i am um, so so nuts t- nuts tv was uh that kind of that kind of launch and was uh, around like my my early teenage years so as a, a super hormonal uh, young teenager, I, I used to, I used to love, I used to love that shit. Wow. <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? Well, thank you for watching. You were one of about eight people who did. But secondly, everyone who worked on it, bizarrely, because it was, you know, it was seen of as being fairly lowbrow. In a lot of ways, it was lowbrow. But um, everyone who worked on it went on to really highbrow things. Like my next TV gig after that was the lottery. 
bizarrely, I went straight to the lottery after that. I was like, did you see some of my previous work? They're like, no, no, no. We just, <laughs> we quite like to present a real show, which I've taken Nuts TV off it. Brilliant. And I was like, okay, let's not, let's not go on the internet, shall we? Let's, let's definitely not pick that up. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it was, but like guys went on to like produce Charlie Brooker. Another guy ended up as the boss of the one show. It was really bizarre where we all ended up after that. You got to start somewhere though. Yeah. Uh, the point I was trying to make before I drifted off, um, was that Zwift is something that I'd love doing for Mm -hmm. once. I was talking about a passion rather than having to, you know, not make it up and feign interest because I'm interested in anything that people pay me to be interested in. Um, but, you know, I was, you know, I love it and I love racing and I am racing tonight in the ZRL up the volcano. Whoop, whoop. Is that, three, but is, three, is, three laps of it. Three I laps. know, 40k race. Is that because Fuck. you've got um, a fascination with cycling previous to Zwift or is it because of your whole esports kind of background that you then got into Zwift? I got into Zwift. How did I get into Zwift? I got told, I think we picked up, it was easy emailed to me as had i seen it beforehand it was when i was working doing the, the bespoke for the bbc and we ended up doing a feature on it and we also did another thing where we built a vr world that they built for us and we did a whole interview with is it ollie jones who's the guy who won the first swift academy yeah, yeah ollie jones, ollie, jones yeah right? ollie jones and we did a whole thing with him from his garage but we built it in in 3d i don't know how we did it it was pretty cool actually and i off the back of that started doing races and for me i I've never really been into just going for a ride on Zwift. It's not what encourages me about the platform. What I like doing, because, you know, there's no races at the moment. Even when I did, I couldn't risk hurting myself. I've never been a road racer. I've done a few crits and I've done a fair few cross races, but I love the competition. And Mm -hmm. it is this weird crossing point of computer games and cycling. You know, it is, in some ways, it's the first true e-sport. And it's that, you know, it takes a level of, it'd be wrong to say, Oh, no, well, actually, I'm going to dig myself a hole if I start going down that road. Do it. I'm not going to. Do it. No, I Do won't. It. Well, okay. So you have to be physically talented for the ability to play Counter-Strike or, or anything you want to play, League of Legends. But, and yes, you have to have a level of fitness because you have long days and the way the games play out. But true endurance and training and physical acumen comes down to how good you are at Zwift as well as knowing how to play the game, when to drop your power-ups, how, mm-hmm. to, how to race. There is, there's a weird mix of skills that need to come into being a very good Zwift racer. It's not just an FTP test. Which is why Cameron's so good at it. Mm. Uh, well, I was about to say, I think that's, that's probably why I won the, the national championships. I certainly wasn't, and, and we've, we've talked about this a hundred million times, Chris, but I, mm. I definitely wasn't the physically you know, most capable rider there. But I think from a, from a tactical point of view, and because I had applied this kind of, mentality from other gaming aspects of of my life that, I, that i'm you know i'm interested in um what or whatever like i kind of applied that sort of knowledge to this and and sort of saw zwift more as a game rather than my my you know m- rather than an out and out physical you know who physical battle of, of who's the strongest man and um i think you made a good point there about seeing Zwift as, you know, you don't really go on there to train. You only really use it to, to, to race. And I'm exactly the same. Like I've tried to not race. I've tried to not ride on the turbo at all, really this winter. The only times I've been training inside is when I kind of physically have to, when there's snow or ice outside. And um, when I have been training, it's funny because I, I don't ever really use Zwift to train. I've just got my, my, my Wahoo and, you know, I've got my, my power that I'm doing that session, my efforts, um, but then at, when I'm racing, you know, then, but then I'll go on Zwift to race. And that's kind of, that's where I see it personally. Um, I, and I don't know whether that's because, because I'm, you know, a racing cyclist. So it's very, it's, it's not very often that I just jump on my turbo to just ride for the sake of riding. You know, I've always kind of got a goal in mind or 20 minute efforts or whatever I'm doing on that particular day. So, um, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to immerse myself w- within the game, um, yeah, yeah. But you can, I think you can normally tell somebody who understands Zwift, and I think you can normally tell somebody who understands bike racing by looking yeah. at the watts per kilo. If you see somebody who comes in, because I always end up, I always finish wherever I, because I'm a B-cat now, and I'm very much a heavy B-cat. I'm 100 kilos, and I have to knock out insane power to try and stay with anyone. But, you know, the fact that anything that goes upwards, I'm going to struggle with. I will always end up finishing in around people who are knocking out 3.8, 3.9, 4 watts a kilo. But I can stay with them because I sort of know how to not game it, but I know to stay in the wheels to, to act like a weasel. I know when to drop power ups. I think I'm fairly smart when it comes to the gaming aspect of Zwift 
of how to race. But then I would guess that comes down to understanding bike racing as well. If you think you're the strongest and you sit on the front, then of course you're going to be knackered when you get to the end of the race. You're not going to have a sprint if you're just going to big dog it all the way around. So, yeah. I, you know, everyone around me and I'm doing, you know, the most I've ever done is like 3.5 watts a kilo. And that was on a 10, 10 kilometer race. So you can always tell people, I think, who understand yeah. it, who understand gaming, who understand bike racing by looking at the watts a kilo. And if there's yeah, less than everyone around them, then they're doing well. Yeah, I was, I was, I always say this. Whenever we get like a proper pro that that you know is takes interest in learning how to play Zwift, I think you know they're they're going to be a serious force to be reckoned with. I know with with my race team uh, with, with with Ribble Well Tight last week we did a we did like a, a team race where all of those guys um, got together and basically raced over like a, I think it was like 20, 20 or k or something um, course. There's fifteen of us or something. And I got third in the end behind uh, Dan Bigham, who won, and then Ollie Moores, who got second, my teammate. Um, and and I think Dan's average power was like 5.2 watts per kilo. Um, Ollie's was 4.7, and then and mine in third was was 4.4. And then behind me was was uh, Freddie Sheska, who was also 4.7. So it's like that's a that's a considerable difference, you know, mm -hmm. for for especially like this this race finished up a hill as well so um yeah i always say like wh whenever we get the day when when an actual sort of world tour pro with, with world tour pro numbers learns how to play zwift and learns how to understand the game like they're going to be you know top dog tom pidcock he seems to have got his head around it because if you saw the first <laughs> races he did through last year mm -hmm. i mean i know he wasn't enthusiastic when he first got into it but when he got his head around it he seemed to he seemed he seemed to get better at it quite quickly and rigoberto ran seems to understand it as well. He seems to have got his head around Yeah, Tom's got the perfect build for a Zwifter. If you're going to build a Zwifter, you build a Pidcock. Short, yeah. light, and can put out unbelievable power. Like, yeah. Aran's, quite, Aran's quite a big, tallish guy. So, like you say, you've got, to, you've got to put out a lot of, and I'm the same, you've got to put out a lot of watch just to stay with those those lighter riders. Yeah. Be interesting you, to, you, must be, you must be an A-cat. Me? Chris. No. No. Yeah. I'm 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 B. I'm right. I'm right on the cusp. I'm right. He's on an the A. Bunch. I'm not. He's an A. He just a, he's, an, he's an A. He just likes winning. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. So so that no, was no, the no, same no, for no, me. No. I was I was a C. I was I was right off the top of C, and it was a case of I'm not going to progress, but I can win races in the Cs, or I can move up into the Bs and progress. What does Swift Power put you as? It puts me as a B now because I was a C almost a B. All right. So as soon as I I moved myself up. So I could still now, I still could now race as a C. Well, then, then you should until. No, why? Because I'm, but I'm getting faster and better being in the Bs because it's making me try harder. But I'd rather, I'd rather Zwift Power say, right, you're done now. You can't go back to that cat. You've, you've progressed. I could go into an A race, but I know I'm going to get my ass handed to me every single time. And I know it's not about the winning, but when it's on stream, people like to see you do well. <laughs> <laughs> you need a sandbagging account. Is that what you're saying here, Chris? Love bit. <laughs> nah, mate, you, you'd be all right in the A. Just, just have a good, have a crack. I have won, you, I like, have won an A race in the past. I've won one wait, A think race. Think of the story. Think of the story. Like, you, as you start your A race, A, A cat journey, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna be down in the dumps and it's kind of trying not to get dropped, and then you're gonna work your way up, and next thing you know, you fucking, you, you're rolling me in sprints. Uh, yeah, and I'm and I'm like high on EPO, and I'm blood bagging myself to the nine. <laughs> It's the only way I can win. It's not going to work, is it? It's not going to work. I want to talk about um, esports because I know, I know, Cam. When when we first talked about getting OJ on, you were like, "Oh, I can't wait to speak to him about about esports and and all obviously all the stuff that he used to do." OJ, you're a big gamer, aren't you? Love it, love it. Anytime I've got, I mean, Apex is my game at the moment. I just there's something about Apex. You don't play it, Cam, do you? I think I've asked you about this in the past. No, I've never, I've never really been into into Apex to be honest. I've never really been in, into any of those sort of sci-fi fucking, you know. So, what's your game then? Call of Duty. Or yeah, Call of Duty. I've never really been into anything other than other than Call of Duty. And I've tried, I've I tried to get into Counter Strike a little bit. Uh, I did, I played it for a while actually, and um, but but yeah, man. From a competitive point of view, just I never really under, I never really took the time to like learn learn it like a like I kind of know Call of Duty. Um, yeah, I mean, Call of Duty is interesting because it changes. You know, the actual game changes once a year when yeah. the other games don't really. If you look at Counter Strike, it's been the same game pretty much for however long it's been. You know, ten years, fifteen years. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I know Counter Strike very well, but I don't play it. 
And I mainly, I'd say the reason I don't play it is I haven't used a mouse and keyboard for about 20 years since I was at university. Since mate, I moved it, it, it's, it's so hard. It's so yeah, hard. I, I, st I, mate, I still use the arrow keys and invert my mouse. Let's just, <laughs> let's just leave that there with the, the level of game in I'm at. Wow. Um, yeah. But then I've done Call of Duty has always been my game. Like I love Call of Duty and I've worked on it and I, and I, I it, you know, it ruined all of gaming for me. Did, did Call of Duty. Especially like the modern warfare, like modern warfare one and modern warfare two. Oh, I just didn't, mate. What's your favorite? I, I didn't play another What's your favorite. Favorite Call of Duty? Yeah. Ever. Hmm. Ever. Like the one at the moment is amazing. The new Black Ops Cold War is brilliant, but it's not my favorite. I would say my favorite is probably Modern Warfare two, mm -hmm. just because yeah. I, you know, I spent so much time on it. You know, you get the accumulated time. How long have you spent on this game? It's yeah. like I could have, I could have learnt French or. Made to Mars or something with the amount of time I spent on that game. What about your favourite map? Wet works. Wet works, really? Yeah. Was I that the ship that was on the ship? Yeah. No, I could never get with that. Do you know the reason I, I said wet works? I, I can never remember the name of the. <laughs> I've never remembered the name of maps. I really can't remember. Because you just of the said maps. the one with the helicopter on the top of the hat. The nuke. Nuke's amazing because nuke's still around. Wait, which one's nuke? Nuke Town. Yeah, nuke Town. Yeah, Nuketown was good. But I like Scrapyard. Scrap Rust. was good. Scrap Rust Rust was good. We're just re we're just reeling them off now. Okay, what was your favourite? I'd say Scrapyard. <laughs> okay. No, what was your favourite Call of Duty? Oh, uh, Modern Warfare 2, without a doubt. Yeah. Straight away. Yeah. See, I'm gonna throw a spanner in the works here and say uh, Call of Duty 4. Which was which one was four? That was, that was Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare. One? yeah. One. Yeah, yeah. It just wasn't as good as two. No, I don't. No, I think they took every everything that was missing from one, they put into two, and then all of a sudden, after that, it, they just started chucking stuff in there that didn't need to be in there. I don't think. I would say okay, yeah. let's do top threes. Let's do top threes. I go Modern Warfare two, yeah, World War two, which I thought was brilliant. Yes, I mean, oh mate, I, I did work on that a bit, but I just thought the way they turned it around and the in, there was a really interesting article written about that game at the time, and that was that nowadays depending on your age, you don't get your history from books. You know, we live in an age where if you want your history, you have to go on Wikipedia and look it up. And computer games and films have become a very interesting way of passing down that knowledge of what happened to previous generations within them. So there is an onus on these companies. It was Sledgehammer who made the uh, World War II to make them historically as accurate as possible because it's, you know, it's the way that we get our historical information nowadays. I think, uh, yeah, I think I'd forgotten about World War II actually. And now, you know, when now you brought it up, it, it, it's, it's bringing back a whole host of memories from uh, sort of 14, 15 year old Cameron skipping school with, with, uh, with my mates playing, playing, oh, running, running around with the- uh, 15 when that came out. Mate, no. I, I, I think I must no. have been about 15. I, I can't, I don't know. when. What year did it come out? Like, it's not I was, that long ago. No, it's surely not, not that long ago. long ago. Mate, that's 11 years. I'm only 24. Uh, it wasn't 10 years ago. No, 2000, hey, absolute... 2007, was it? Modern Warfare? No, no, Modern War 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 no, no, Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare was 2007, right? Call, I'm I'm probably about that. Now. Call of Duty World War 2. Here we go. Refusing to believe it came out that long ago. No, it's 2017, probably, man. 27 2017. Dickhead. Four years ago. What? Are you thinking of World yeah. at War? Hang on. Can are you thinking World at War? It definitely didn't come out in 2017, the one I'm thinking of. You're thinking of World at War, not World War Two. You're thinking of uh, World at War. MP5. I'm thinking of World at War. Yeah, I'm thinking of World at War. Which, which was the first <laughs> Hey, you're thinking of World at War. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's 2008 that came out. So I was, I was about... Hey, listen! 13, I was a teenager 13. in two thousand and eight as well. Thirteen. Well, were you? But I think, hey, I think world world at war was one of the was one one of the best cods ever created. Yeah, it was all right. I think, yeah. MP five, M one carbine, bouncing betties, bouncing betties, zombies, Z uh, zombies, a... mate. Come on, that was like the original zombies. That was original Nat, never, never been Nacta, a zombies fan. Nacta never under, been a zombies fan. What was it called, Chris? Nacta under token. Yes, yeah, like that Nacta. Toten, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and you could do a, you could do a little glitch where you jumped into the wall and yeah. the zombies could kill you. Yeah, Good time. So hey, that's those the, are the days. What's the uh, what was in third place for for best uh, overall Call of Duty? Modern Warfare One. Yeah. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to put in the new one, and I'll tell you why I'm going to put the new one in. Uh, because they've got the amazing gunfight mode in it. The gunfight mode for me is one of the most exciting things to happen in Call of Duty for a while. What's what's gunfight? Two on two. I've not seen three. It. Uh, two on two and three on three. It is oh, single, nice. you know, everyone has the same weapon, single kill, you take a round, first to five. It is 
possibly one of the most exciting things that's happened. And oh. also something that's come in, in the last few is Prop Hunt. Have you played Prop Hunt? <laughs> no, I, I played it on the, um, I played it once on the, on was it the remastered version of, of Modern Warfare? Yeah, they that. did it in World War Two as well. And I just, you know, I think nowadays, I, I've got a little bit bored of Call of Duty with the whole just run, die, kill, respawn, run, die, kill, respawn, run, die, kill, respawn. Mm-hmm. It just sort of got on my tits a bit. So the new modern ones I've enjoyed playing because there's different modes. Because for years I was just team deathmatch. That's it. I did like, I think, I um, like sticks and stones on uh, Black Ops. What's that? That was where you had, um, you had um, a throwing axe... You had a knife, and if you if you stabbed someone, you got five points. If you threw a knife, you got like twenty points. And if you hatcheted them in the back, it took all their points off them. So you could be leading oh. all the way to the end, and then get a hatchet in the back, and you'd lose. It was brilliant, uh, and you could have wages on it as well. That just sounds like a cry. Yeah, deeply. it was awesome. Sorry, Cam. I think I, I think uh, I think Warzone, Warzone has has kind of revitalised the Call of Duty franchise. This this card, I think uh, it was sort of started to die off a bit and I think kind of since the popularity of you know H1Z1 Fortnite PUBG and now now they've kind of incorporated that battle royale element into uh, into modern into the modern warfare I think that's kind of done done good things for it yeah I'm just not a battle royale fan apart he says saying that the only game he plays is Apex but I don't feel yeah. Apex is a ba- yeah, I hate I hate all battle royales, but I love Apex. There you go. There's a <laughs> Why? For you. Why do you hate battle it's, royales? Do you know what? Because ah, I can never find anyone. I like. I don't have a lot of time, so if I'm getting on, I need to know that I can get a game done. We're done. We're... Oh, f you! Do you know what? Worst podcast ever. You still no, you still connected? Worst, worst podcast <laughs> guest ever. Oh. Do you know what? You introduced me as this professional. Sat with my laptop on the bed because the internet was bad, a microphone with the connections terrible that keeps cracking if I lean on the bed too much. I, You know, it's it's the old school equivalent of having to stand outside holding your aerial up to get a you know, reception of BBC One. <laughs> um, it is, it is an ent- I play with a mate of mine, my mate Tom, who's my ex-business partner. Um, and he, we just have a good time playing it. And I think my heart is beating at the end of those games. You get a whole load of good hot jobs you get to kill people you get to run around you can try and work out your weapons there's a bit of strats without having to be super stratty uh, and i think when you get to the end it is truly exhilarating and if you win a game i've never been that excited yeah i used to play apex quite a bit until cam got on modern warfare and i went back to that so i, I started on fortnite quite a bit before Ugh. yeah i know but this listen right listen this was before the kids got hold of it and spoiled oh, it. Oh, right, okay. This well, was it was still any- cool before yeah. it was ruined by the kids. Before anybody started building stuff, you'd, you'd likely see one wall in front of someone. That was it. Nowadays, you see skyscrapers and all this. You can't even tell what's it, going the, on with one of them games. The building hotels and all sorts. I was watching... Uh, so a, a guy I know called Higgsy is a Fortnite streamer and he does all the... He's a competitive He's a competitive player and he does these... I think you call it arena, which is like league play. So mm. um, they kind of match you up with with other similar abilities. So he's quite, you know, quite near the top of this leaderboard. So when he joins the arena, there's like fucking, it's just pros against pros. And mate, watching them play, it's just, it, you get dizzy watching the fucking mm-hmm. screen. You literally get dizzy watching the screen. And I, I fail to believe, like, I struggle to believe that they know what they're doing. Like they're not just <laughs> literally fucking just, just throwing everything. their mouse around, pressing every button, like... It's mad that there's actually an, a strategy here. It's yeah. fucking mind blowing. It is crazy. Listen, I just heard my name being said in vain downstairs, and I know because there's a race tonight. I've got to go help with tea. What else are we going to okay. talk about? I reckon I've got about another five ten minutes. OJ, before, go. No, go. Also. No, go and get some brownie points before you get into. Go, OJ. Just get out of here. Just We're enough of your there. broken microphone and terrible <laughs> internet connection. Yeah. You've you know, ruined it enough. <laughs> yeah, hey, get out. Listen. Can't believe we tried to get you on for weeks. I know what's going off. If, if there's something going off down there, you need to get down there ASAP. Well, I don't... It's all gone quiet. It's all... Can I just apologise about the background? I mean, do you, have you got kids, Chris? Yes. Is your house just a complete mess 24-7? No, I'm all right. Really? Yeah, I don't oh. live with my kids. <laughs> oh, okay. That probably helps. But my house... I. <laughs> I tidied. But I know I've tidied mean. the kitchen. I've tidied the kitchen three times today, and I just walked in before I did this, and it's still a heap. Mate, it's as soon as they, like, yeah, as, when they come here, yeah, you just forget about tidying anything up. You clean, you clean a room up. You walk out of it. You walk back in it, and it's in exactly the same mess as it was before. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's called yeah. a lived in. That's the um shut up cam. It it's lovely <laughs> playing that's me playing a violin. That's yeah, a very big that. violin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Although I've seen people that. do that move on the internet before and they weren't playing violins, Oy. Cameron. Wow. Right, they were playing... They were playing... <laughs> <laughs> no, don't mention it. Don't mention it. All right, well, listen, guys, I've enjoyed this. Oh, Why don't the next so, one we do... I'd love to do it again. Why don't the next one we do... Why don't we do it in Apex? Why don't we do it as a as a streamed Apex one? Because you guys are PC, aren't you? Yeah. We've, we have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've talked about this before, actually, with Chris, whether that's, you know, doing one, playing Warzone or actually, actually riding on Zwift. But... Um, yeah, maybe hey, maybe we're gonna have to make this happen, Chris. Let's, yeah, do, Apex. Right, let's do No, it. let's do Apex. Let's do Apex. Let's do Apex. Mate, I've never played that game. I literally have never played that you game. You are gonna life. be better Excellent. than me at it. I can guarantee well, you. Well, look, I'm all right at it and I'll be on I'll be on a PlayStation, so we'll have to set it up. All right. Sounds good to me. I'm in. I'm in for this. Right, boys. Well listen, thank Appreciate you very it, much. Mate. Apologies for my apologies for my internet. Apologies for my terrible microphone. The problem with the microphone is, he says, I've got to go, but I'm gonna talk more. <laughs> um it still works, and therefore I can't justify buying another one when it still sort of works. Yeah, that's you, you'd right. be right. I reckon. I reckon you just nick one from work, mate. You just nick one. They've got decent microphones, haven't they? At Radio Two, do you know my yeah. studio at Radio <laughs> Two? My the the um the local radio station that I worked at, like the first community radio station, had a better studio than Radio Two. It's bizarre. Brilliant. Like it all works. It's all good, but it's just a bit ramshackle. <laughs> Don't tell Radio Two I said this. All uh, right, gotta go. Nice one. Appreciate it, See mate. You later, mate. Catch you later. Bye bye. See you soon. Ciao. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure if you're not done already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We're going to be getting Borgy back on the podcast at some point soon, hopefully. Once again, as ever, massive thank you to Cameron Jeffers. Cammy boy, last words with you. See you in a bit. Is that it? <laughs>